And we're live. Hello, everyone, and thank you for uh, being here with us today on another Vault Talk. As you can see, I have Andrew Jones from Deity Microphones. How you doing, How sir? How are you, man? You How got you something doing? cool here. I do. A lot of people want to see this. I think a lot of people are excited to see this. For this sure. is something that uh, we haven't had in the United States, actually. We've only shown it uh, in Amsterdam, and then it quickly like disappeared Amazing. back into the workshop wow so this is the first time since amsterdam that we are showing this very good and what we're talking about everybody is the deity connect wireless system this is the newest wireless system on the block well it's actually not even out yet when does it come out uh we're looking at a pre-nab release awesome so a week or two before nab so we're getting the scoop before NAB on all yep. this stuff. That's amazing. Excellent. Well, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit more about you, Andrew. I want to know a little bit more about how you are channeling all of this Elon Musk energy to be as productive as you are. How the hell do you do it? I never sleep. You, you don't. I, last night was the first night I slept probably this you, week. You told me to <laughs> kick up the coffee a little bit it's, harder than usual. Yeah, these are some big mugs, and yeah. I'm already halfway down on my on my. Uh, we got more if coffee. you need it. Yeah, Cheers. this is... Right? I'm craving this coffee. <laughs> it's good morning. stuff. It's good stuff. And it always tastes better in an analog mug. Mm -hmm. So anyways, well, let's talk a little bit more about how did you get uh, started in production sound? So I got started in production sound uh, when I moved to Los Angeles. Before that, I was in the camera department doing videography. I was doing sound for corporate gigs. Mm -hmm. uh, you sit down interviews, but nothing like I would call production sound mixing full scale. Right. You know, I was doing something with just some basic uh, with camera, what what most guys would call camera wireless. Okay. And I was doing like an H4N, you know, real basic sound when I was still living in Dallas. But when I moved to Los Angeles, I got on a film set as a grip because I couldn't find any other work. Showed up. I was busting my butt for two days, setting up, lighting this massive set for a sci-fi shoot. And the sound guy rolls in on day three. Mm-hmm. Small cart, uh, analog mixer that probably was 20 years old and a 416. And I was like, who the heck is this guy and why is he getting paid three times my rate? Right. Who is this guy? Yep. And I, I just was glued to him for the rest of the shoot. I'm like, what do you do? What do you? And, and it hit me half of the stuff on his cart I already owned just from my corporate days. Right. And the stuff I didn't own was almost stuff that he was using just to make it a little bit fancier and uh, add a little bit of workflow to his everyday you know life yeah and i was like instantly just going okay cool I'm doing that now right because i could not find work as a camera guy at all mm -hmm. you know it might shock you there's a lot of camera guys here in la <laughs> there's a lot of camera operators. and there's not enough sound guys so immediately i was like okay cool i'm gonna learn everything there is about sound mm -hmm. as soon as that happened though i got a call to go work on fixer upper okay what is Fixer Upper? I'm Fixer sorry. Fixer Upper was a reality show for HGTV. Okay. Um, I think it's now still airing, but I don't think they're new episodes. Okay. So I got called out there to go do DIT work. Um, and again, I was out there for three and a half months, and I was just glued to the sound guy, learning from, from David every single step. He's, he's doing reality work and micing all up and how fast-paced all that was. Mm -hmm. So after that was done, like that was my crash course into sound. And as soon as I came back, I bought all my gear. Wow. And that's where it all started was I learned from some guys and kind of apprenticed while doing work on set for other uh, positions. So that's one of the great things about you, I have to say, and I have to compliment you on it because a lot of sound guys or sound mixers in general, they're just sound people. And you're kind of a hybrid. You understand that other DSLL realm, that camera world, probably more than most of us. You know, I, I started in the DSLR world in 2008. Okay. Uh, the same year that the 5D Mark II came out. Right. Um, in fact, I, I did a book, I think it was Ping Penguin Publishing, mm -hmm. uh, about cinema uh, and DSLRs and all that stuff in 2009. I helped uh, outline the book on that stuff. Wow. Uh, so, I mean, it was I was in the forums back when it was like HV20.net. Wow. And people were like trying to figure out how to cobble together uh, lens adapters to put DSLR lenses on like their HV20 Vixia cameras. Um, wow. 
so yeah, I mean, I remember all of that and learning at the very early stages in the DSLR world as to what these cameras were going to be. Right. And the question was just when was something like a C300 going to finally come out? Yeah, exactly. It's not a matter of if, it was a when. Yeah. And now that we're here, I, I'm very familiar with all that kind of stuff. Excellent. So what got you into your new position at Didi? Where did you find them? How did you? How did they resonate with you? Because now you're you're still working in the field from time to time. Very right? little. Now. Very little because Very of little. how busy you are. Yeah. Um. But so what caused that transition? Did you just have enough of the rain shoots or what? <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, what caused that transition was I was doing the wave report. Uh, blog right. for mm -hmm. for quite a while. WaveReport.com. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I reviewed a microphone from Aperture called the Aperture Deity. Right. And I was impressed, but I couldn't give it that seal of approval that it's professional quality. I said it's really good though if you're a YouTuber or a hobbyist. Right. You can't do better. Right. Got called in from Aperture. They said, Hey, come meet our designers. We want to listen more to you. You weren't you know that keen on the mic. Tell us more. Well, it was supposed to be like a 30-minute coffee turned into like four hours. And that was two and a half years ago. Wow. Uh, right before NAB last year, they, okay. they called me back and they said, Hey, uh, we've got some new stuff. Come take a look. And what they wanted me to come take a look at was this idea for a brand new business model where they actually stop making microphones and they start making microphones under a brand new brand. And they need someone to come to kind of develop that brand. Wow. And they said, hey, do you want to come develop that brand? For sure. You're like, yes. Yeah, so I took my blogger hat off and I put on a, a new hat of manufacturer. Right. So what's the difference between those two things? I will tell you, um, it, <laughs> it is easy to be a blogger. Mm -hmm. It is easy to have an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's very easy to have an opinion, right? It's very easy to have an opinion. Uh, as a manufacturer, you have to predict all that right. well in advance. For sure. Because... You have to assume what the customer wants. And if it's something they've never had before, mm -hmm. it's a lot more risk. So you have to do a lot of beta testing. Right. And a lot of that, I, I now have a new appreciation for everything I ever wrote in every article I ever wrote. Are you like apologizing to people that you've written to in the past? Dude, I'm really sorry. Now that I'm on the other side of the fence, I get it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I was a little harsh <laughs> in that blog in 2012. <laughs> you know? You know, not to that point point but what i definitely will say is the stuff that i saw back then mm -hmm. i definitely apply to the designs that we do now for sure because i know what i've seen in the past and i'm like i know what has been on the market i know where it could have gone when we develop something from brand new yeah let's go that path and not just be copying everyone on the market exactly wow so, so it, you meet with them, meet and, with them, and you start talking about these microphones. They instantly fall in love with you, as everyone does. <laughs> and then you start saying, "Well, why do we have to stop at microphones?" Right. So, at Cine Gear last year, we got a booth at Cine Gear, and the In and Out truck was right across the way, and we were sitting there talking about some stuff. And it was like, well, why don't we do a wireless? So I ran over to the in and out truck. I grabbed some napkins because mm -hmm. we don't have any paper in our booth. Like we're, we... No, that's the only way to prototype. You prototype on napkins, Andrew. Don't yeah. you know that? That's like an unwritten rule. So we started to just scribble out what is it we wanted this wireless to do uh -huh. on napkins and what this thing should kind of look like and ergonomics of what this should look like. Right. A very basic concept on some in and out napkins at Cine Gear. In and out. Come IBC, all of a sudden, it's a working prototype. Wow. And now, what is this now? Been two and a half months since IBC? I believe so. Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yeah. Maybe three months since IBC. And right. now we are almost to completion. Boom. And then two months from now, we'll be in AB almost. Yeah, it's early this year. I feel like it's really early this it year. It is a little bit earlier this and year, And we for will sure. have a wireless microphone on the market. Wow. And it's this one here. Yeah. So I tell you what, everybody, let's just open it up because I know that's what everybody's here. We've got almost 20 people online right now that are interested in seeing this. So do the honors, buddy. So you actually get this case. Okay. Um, so when you buy the microphone, you get, I mean, just a full, full <laughs> Report kit. a problem. Nothing. Andrew just hit me. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, you get the full kit. And I mean, let's 
pull these latches up. It's got a really nice sticker on it. It's nice. Is this like a Pelican case or? Uh, this is a hard waterproof case. Very um, good. You know, full gasket here. It even has the valve in the front. Like it really is a nice, you know, solid kind of road case that Very you can good. take on the on plane with you. So what you get in the whole kit, and there's some stuff in here that we're not going to use today, but I do want to kind of talk about it. So the XLR is sitting here. It's taken out because we're about to hardwire this all up. Mm -hmm. But something that we do have that comes with the kit is this USB-C, the USB-C cable. Okay. That also allows you to pass power through. Okay, excellent. So you'll notice one's an M and one's an S. This actually handles your frequency coordinating. So when you actually have multiple receivers, you actually can go from your master into the next slave unit, and that actually just, like that, handle your frequency coordinating. Boom. Because a lot of people are like, well, how do you coordinate 2.4 gigahertz wireless, especially when it's frequency hopping? How do you handle all this? Yeah, they have to be kind of like daisy chain or something, right? You daisy chain your receivers, and exactly. it handles it all. Okay, very so good. So that's something we're not going to be able to show today because we only have the one kit, but we right. do want to kind of talk about that we did think about all that kind of stuff. So okay. when you're in a bag, you have two receivers, you've got four channels of wireless up in the air, you can get all that coordinating. You get this basic little hot shoe. You can you know get a ball mount if you want. Because on the bottom of the receiver is one fourth and three eighths. Perfect. So mounting options is out there. You'll notice these two little hooks on the side. What we came out with is a Velcro system that is reversible and non-damaging to your device. If you want, let me just slide this through. And what this allows us to do is, just like a belt loop, I can take this, fold it over, and there I can go into a bag. Yeah, that's the amazing. If the camera has the other side, I just reverse that. That's great. Simple as that. I mean, that should be something real simple. Now, for some people who do more permanent style installs, a very nice flat bottom, and you can cover that in Velcro and just slap it into whatever you want. Right, exactly. Or on the face. But for people also, if you want to get a little bit longer, go around the leg of a tripod. Exactly. You could go around the leg of a tripod in case your camera has a light on it or something else on top of your camera, like a monitor. Right. But you still want wireless. Yeah, you know, why don't you put it on the, the camera mount right there if everybody wants so, yeah. to see so what So we can literally doing. just go right around the leg of a tripod, and boom, that can just sit right there. And that was kind of the idea was this way, especially with tripods like that where you have these small legs. Everybody it, gets to see the setup. There's nobody here. Just like that, now that thing can sit there and wrap around. Normal Velcro wouldn't e allow you to do that, especially on something like a pipe like yeah. this. So you now have mounting options, unlike anything else uh, on the market. That's great. Uh, transmitters, as we see here. Like I said, a lot of people were asking, what, how big is it? It's really only about as thick as a deck of cards. Yeah, it, I guess I would say it's a little bit smaller than like a G3, G4 wireless system. Yeah, we took system. some photos yesterday. The height... And the width are about the same. It's the thickness. Okay. Is a lot thinner Little, than the G3, yeah, G4. Yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. feels thinner. Um, the build quality feels really good. Yeah. We were dropping this thing like crazy at IBC. Oh, I'm just kidding, everybody. That's fine. Just kidding. Right. We oh, were, he's not scared. No, no, not not at all. I mean, <laughs> you'll notice this aluminum ridging goes right around the edge, so you nice have this nice metal bumper card Very around good. the whole edge the unit so it's almost like even having like a little bit of shock protection inside of it like it's a not, little bit yeah yeah the boards aren't just smacking getting the full impact of the ground correct that's good that's good uh and we even did the boards from wall to wall on the inside so we, even when you squeeze this okay it doesn't bend on you and good flex. okay so there's not any yeah, of those types of issues yeah yep so you can feel all that in the inside so that is all in there nice sealed up now it has the removable antenna, which is a very nice feature for something at this price point. That's for sure. Yeah, so we've got SMA antennas. Okay. Um, the idea was, you know, one of the things I had such a problem with, and what I think kind of made Wave Report a very popular blog, was we had a tutorial on how the SMA mod other brands. Yeah, for sure. Because a lot of people, after about two or three months, the antennas get really messed up, mm -hmm. and then your range gets really messed up. Right. And that's something I really, again, I took from the blogging days. And I said, when we make something, we're going to make something that is user serviceable in that sense. You know what, John Bujak and Corey Johnson, sorry if I butchered those names, they're asking about the cost. You've already sold a few people here. <laughs> so, uh, so cost, we are looking at anywhere between 650 and 800 We're still trying to do the final numbers. Okay. Uh, but that's it, for the duo kit. That's for the dual kit. That's the only way we're going to be selling it at the beginning. Gotcha. Is, is just a dual kit. Okay. So then we're going to be between 600, 650 and 800 Okay. Um, we may come out with a single kit that could probably be about 200 uh, maybe 250 cheaper. Okay. 
Uh, but right now we're doing it just as a duo kit. Very good. Very good. So you literally get all this for that kind of a price point. Mm -hmm. What is the comparison of distance at 50 milliwatt compared to UHF 50 milliwatt? So, okay. And in fact, you know what? I'm kind of glad that you asked this question, John. I'm going to take a seat with me. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get back into the uh, getting off of this Mantis cam for a minute. Um, we need to talk about UHF and 2.4 gigahertz. Yes. Really let yeah, people the... know what the differences are why you guys decided to go this route because even i believe jeff wexler just said in here uh you guys are the first ones to really say you know what no we're going to make a wireless system you uh 2.4 gigahertz and we're going to make it work and, and prove to people that it can be done sure because uh i'll be honest me included I w am one of the I naysayers. Re I remember when you and I were sitting here, what was it, eight months ago? Yep, and I was and like... And I, I leaked it to you, and I said, yep. we're doing this. And, and I was all... scared for you. I was like, yeah. oh my God, don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. You're going to get just like <laughs> rocks thrown at you, you know? You're going to get stoned by all Absolutely. the sound mixers. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, um, we're not going to sit there and, and uh, give up on this. Uh-huh. Uh, because what we th believe is that bi-directional communication between the two devices yeah. offers so much benefit that the cost that comes to 2.4 gigahertz right. is worth it. Wow. Um, if you're sitting there and you're an ENG mixer, you're doing a lot of sit-down interviews, you're doing uh, you know man-on-the-street interviews, red carpets, that kind of thing, this kit's going to be perfect for you. Now, we're not going to sit there and replace your UHF 100 milliwatt, 250 milliwatt systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just probably not going to happen anytime soon. Um, but for the most, yeah, I'd say about 70% of the work that a lot of people do, mm -hmm. uh, you're about to do this boxing show. Yeah. How many walls get between you and the boxer? <sighs> it's, it can just vary all the sure. time. You sure. know, it just totally depends. But for the most part, you're probably not but more than 30 feet away. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless, it, like, sometimes, like, for example, when they're wrapping, like, Manny Pacquiao's gloves and stuff like that, he'll be, like, in a boxed room where they don't want anybody but the trainer and stuff. Sure. So sometimes I do need to shoot through walls. But, no, a lot of the time for the stuff that I'm doing when I'm in an ENG bag, a lot of it is line of sight. A less lot than 50 of it's feet. line of sight. Exactly. Say, sometimes it's, like, 15, 20 feet. So, so many people out there are like, yeah, but I need it to go 500 feet. And I'm like, when? Yeah. Because let's really break down our day-to-day -day life. Most work we do is within 50 feet mm -hmm. for a lot of people out there. If right. you're doing corporate video production, if you're doing car commercials, if you're doing uh, studio work, think about it. In the studio, you're in a giant room. Right. And you're only having to shoot through some Lou on board right. on a set. Right. It's not that actually hard. For sure. You know what, though? What, well, let me ask you a question. Is there a way to hook up an external antenna system to Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Okay, so, so if people are worried about having 50 to 100 feet of range. Absolutely. They're still going to get more. There are so many directional 2.4 gigahertz antennas out there. Right. That, you know, these are just the basic whips we include. Okay. But your receiver, uh, those SMA ports can definitely hook up to external systems, and there are uh, plenty of 2.4 gigahertz uh, splitters and external systems out there in the market. For sure. That you can hook up into these. Excellent. We got to take a moment to stop and say, hi, Brenda from K-Tech. We know you're watching. Love you. <laughs> That's K-Tech. We got to love them. And they're our absolutely. sponsor. So we absolutely love everything that they do. Guys, if you don't know, K-Tech has been helping me for years to basically get Video Mantis off the ground where I can do these free uh, Mantis discussions and vault talks to basically show everybody all of this stuff right from the manufacturer's mouth. So thank you, Brenda. Thank you, K-Tech. We love you guys. Go support them. If you don't know about them, definitely check out Wave Report as well as VideoMantis.com to check out all the blogs and all of the cool stuff that they do. Yeah, I think Wave Report, I think Jared over there now uh, just reviewed the new K-Tech uh, hat, so you can still wear your headphones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the yep. sun visor hat thing, mm -hmm. that's just amazing. It's absolutely great. Yep, I definitely use it anytime I've been using it. You know what, I've been doing a lot more... Seems like when you get into the winter months, all the call times get earlier because everybody needs to shoot in the day. So, you know, yeah. you just have to be ready for everything. You know, you got to be ready for the cold and the heat. Yeah. And that hat is great. So you can still wear your headphones and for still sure. block your, you know, your vision because you're having to look at little screens. Absolutely. They're definitely not fighting the sun as much as they always claim. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that is kind of why we chose 2.4 gigahertz is uh, we wanted also that bidirectional communication. Mm -hmm. Every single setting at the transmitter 
can be done at the receiver. Okay. And that's for both systems. Wow. Uh, for both transmitters. So as this kind of comes in, um, if you, I need to do a mic check with you. Sure. And I want to do a mic check with you, and I don't want to have you just always stand next to my sound card. Maybe they need to pull you over and do a rehearsal. Right. I'm not having to say, oh, I'm not done yet. Yeah, I'm not ready. Yeah, yeah, go to your rehearsal. I'm going to dial in all your settings here while I'm right. listening to you. And maybe you're on actual set, you know, 20 feet away, actually in the environment of what you're going to be doing your performance on. And I can do all my sound check from there. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Well, let's actually plug this guy in. We wanted to basically show you guys the case, but now what we're going to do is uh, we have a Mix Pre 10T on our table right here. And we're going to plug him in. You can see that my audio is coming in on channel 6 and he's on channel 5. But we're going to plug it into 3 and 4 and actually let you guys hear this. So one of the cool things about this unit that we also insisted on was the outputs be balanced. Okay. So when you actually plug this into this mix, uh, mix Breed 10, these are actually going to be de uh, balanced leads. That's your up. 3, that's your 4. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think that is what I have And while done. Andrew is doing this, uh, John, of course, that's what we're here for. So if you guys ever have questions, you can ask them live. If you need to private message something, if you have a question that you don't want to go public, by all means, just Facebook Video Mantis. Send us a Facebook message, and I can ask Andrew after the show. Um, or please ask it now for everyone. Ask us. I you mean, know, there's nothing to hide. No, there's nothing ever to hide. The thing that you have to think about is that Video Mantis is all about bridging the gap between students and professionals. So, you know, what? you have to think, you know, what? if you have this question, maybe there's 20% of the sound mixers out in the world that don't know that either. Coffees. So, um, yeah, you don't just ask away, guys. We're here to help. Let's go back over here. So one thing you'll notice as soon as I start plugging in and turning these units on, okay, is you actually get the battery display. You know what? Could I transfers. ask you to turn it off and turn it back on, and I'm going to point at it Absolutely. just to show the whole process so everybody can see. It's the whole process. You just turn it on, and that's it. And I'm going to turn on one of my transmitters. So I'm noticing that it has basically a split screen, everyone, and it's got, you know, I would assume ch uh, transmitter A on the left, transmitter B on the right. He just turned on transmitter B, so it's showing the RF antenna strength, which looks to be solid. It shows mm -hmm. uh, the battery indicator, and it shows an RF meter, too. So that thing at the bottom, by the way, is also the name. You can also change the names of oh, the transmitters. Oh, okay, so, so your name got... is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right now? Yeah. Guys, it's... I'm going to try to zoom in. I apologize if this isn't perfect, but go ahead and point to the one, two, three, four, five see. section. Right here at the very, very bottom of the screen, you actually have the name of the unit. Mm -hmm. So you can actually change these names. There I'm going to do it right now, and you can see how quick this is. So I'm going to show, I'm just going to basically hold it on the receiver, and he's tuning the transmitter right now. And I'm just going to go over real fast and... You know, I'll just move up here just so that you can kind of see. We're going to go through all of these menus in a minute, guys. But he's going through and there's like a QWERTY keyboard that kind of scrolls through. So you can type everything in. I can tell you one thing. This room is very bright and these OLED screens are very oh. nice looking. And as soon as I finish Boom. it here, it's already done over there. So he typed high, and the second that he did it, it instantly changed. So that's kind of cool. You yeah. know, you have your names or even just transmitter A, transmitter B, you know what's going on, what's coming in. Yeah, so you can actually dial in all your actors or character names into mm -hmm. the transmitters, and the receiver has it right there. Excellent. So as soon as you want to do some setting changes, you know exactly whose unit you're changing. And I notice that there are three battery indicators. There's one three for battery the, indicators. One for so, the receiver and two for the transmitters. Exactly. Each transmitter has their own battery indicator as well as the battery indicator for the receiver itself. Excellent. There Excellent. is a built-in lithium battery. Uh, gives you 10 hours of runtime. Gotcha. But that's not enough. That's 10 hours at 100 milliwatts. Oh, okay. That's so as big. You, as you reduce your milliwatt output or as you... Um, use different features, like if you want to put a transmitter to sleep, you can remotely put it to sleep from your receiver. Right. You can get more battery life. Excellent. Um, quick charge capabilities on these is Qualcomm 2.0 and 3.0 quick okay. charge. Very good. So we're looking at a very fast, I want to say it's like, I want to say it's like 45 minutes or 55 minutes for a transmitter. And that's to, to go to full power. That's the full power. That's from zero to full power. Excellent. So if you've done five hours and you're still uh, a thousand milliwatts, mm -hmm. 
that means you only have to fill it up for a thousand milliwatts. You're looking at only maybe 25 minutes, 30 wow. minutes of charge time. Very cool. So that's a lunch, you know, and that's exactly. again, to go all the way back up the full. Wow. So for the rest of your day, mm-hmm. so it's not, a, that's not actually like a deal breaker for a lot of people that they thought it was going to be. Yeah. As long as you're diligent and you're making sure that your stuff is charged up and hot in the morning, you're not going to have a problem during your day. Right. I mean, yeah. that's something we do with our cell phones every single day. There's so many devices now in our life that have rechargeable batteries because it's good for the environment. I mean, one thing I noticed when I was on a movie a couple of years ago, we were just tossed. It was my first time really doing nine volts mm-hmm. on wireless and we had eight channels of wireless and we were just tossing batteries yeah. out like crazy. And I literally had a, 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 a paint bucket full of nine volts and I thought that was the most wasteful thing possible. So when it came time to manufacture this, I was like, no, we have to be rechargeable. We have to actually, you know, do good by the environment. That we can't be just wasting single-use batteries. For sure. Especially when lithium has come so far. For sure. What is the microphone power output of the transmitter? Someone is asking, can the Sankin COS11 be used with this system? So we're outputting 3 volts. Okay. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you can definitely use other different uh, wireless. It's a standard 3.5 millimeter. Mm-hmm. Uh, tip is your hot. Uh, but so is also the ring. These are stereo. There you go. <laughs> That's an interesting thing, everybody. These are stereo transmitters. Yeah, these are stereo. So you can actually plug in a stereo line level, come into the menu system. Into here. Into the transmitter. Okay, so I'm sending a left and right into left one of these right guys. Left and right into one of these guys. You can actually pull a left and right out of just a single output over here. Okay, so so basically what you're saying is you would either use it as a dual mono where you're getting it on both, mm-hmm. or you're you're putting one of these back in the case and using one of these in stereo mode, and then it's outputting left and right. Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so that's not necessarily a deal killer. That's just the, the fact of how that works. It could be used as a hop that way exactly. or whatever you need. So if you need a camera hop, you still have the system ready to go. Exactly. Boom. That's very So cool. yeah, if you're still out there using your UHF for talent everything but you're doing some eng work and you don't want to lug around a beta snake anymore yeah we'll be your beta snake awesome awesome we have another one don't think we ever really answered the 50 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt question sorry i thought we did um let's talk about it a little bit more sure they're i think that they're just asking more i think a lot of people are going to be asking this for you so sure. let's debunk it now we need to talk about the range in the differences between the uhf at the lower end of the spectrum and then the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum that is being used here Sure. So the first thing that people probably don't realize is the difference between 30 milliwatts and 50 milliwatts is not actually a huge difference. Yeah, it's not 20. It's, 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 it's a logarithmic exactly. equation. So the, the, the benefits of 30 milliwatt systems like your uh, Sony D11s and your G4s okay. is not gigantically worse than a 50 milliwatt system from another brand. Right. Uh, so when we start looking at that kind of stuff, it's very logarithmic. So yes, 50 milliwatts at 2.4 gigahertz is not going to be the exact same. The punching right. power is not going to be the exact same. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think most people even need the 50 for most applications. And that's why we're talking about this in a sense of you really need to evaluate what your applications are and needs. Uh, most people probably can get away with 25 milliwatts. So for sure. I did a, a reality show where I was in A2 um, where we were doing this thing with Lego and we dropped almost everything down to 10 and 25 because we're in the studio. Right. And we weren't more than 50, maybe 70 feet away from someone. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I did that too recently on a job. We were working out outdoors in the middle of a mountain range on a car commercial. Not allowed to say which one. Um, but the same thing. We're only 10, 20 feet away, and we had 100 milliwatt transmitters on them. And I was like, dude, you can back this down. We don't need to change Absolutely. batteries every two hours. Absolutely. You know. So for when we say that we've got the power outputs, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're talking 25 is great for interviews. Right. 100 milliwatts is what you're going to use whenever you're you're sitting there and you're like, I'm really worried about hiccups. Let's mm-hmm. just go full power. That's yeah. what we gave the option. Mm-hmm. Um, as for range. This is such a odd question because you notice we're talking about power output. Yeah. We're not talking about feet because I don't know what your set is out exactly. there. Exactly. Because and if, it just depends on where you are, what your environment is. What your environment is is right. the number one application. So yep. when we're talking line of sight is the only way we can really talk about this because that's the only thing that you out there and what I out here can both duplicate. Correct. Is line of sight. In exactly. line of sight, we're easily looking at uh, 100 meters. Okay. 
That's great. That's a football field. Miles. That's a football field. Yeah. Uh, when we were in Amsterdam, I mean, that's easily what we were pulling off in Amsterdam on the early prototypes. That's amazing. Um, again, it, it comes down to where you are, though, mm-hmm. uh, what your environment is, what your RF environment mm-hmm. is. Exactly. If you're in an area that has no RF, you're going to get probably a lot better range than if you're in the middle of downtown L.A. where there's frequencies all over the place and that are metal just attacking surfaces. you. Yep, reflections everywhere. Yeah, so, I mean, when we talk about range, it really is environmental, mm-hmm. first and foremost, as well as we're talking about power output and antennas. And that's what we're talking about when we talked earlier. There's aftermarket antennas and directional antennas. Just outputting power is not necessarily the biggest part of the equation. Mm. The biggest part of the equation is collecting the power right. that is in the air and, and deciphering what signal is and which is RF noise. Exactly. You guys have to think about it. It's not about having a better gun to shoot the audio down or the RF down. It's about having the better ear to be able to hear it. You can have the biggest cannon in the world, that you know, but if you don't have the ear that's going to be able to hear it, doesn't have the best front end available, then you're going to have problems. Yeah, think about it in this terms. Uh, the human cannon, I mean, he can fire himself across a football field, but if his net isn't big enough to catch him, you're going to have problems that <laughs> yeah, day. He's he going to be broken. <laughs> so at the end of the day, that's why we did SMA antennas. So if someone wants to go out there and get themselves some 14 DBI, you know, antennas for the receiver, mm-hmm. um, which 14 DBI antennas uh, for anyone out there that doesn't know about the 2.4 gigahertz space, um, that's the antennas that you're using like on a Wi-Fi uh, router right there, like that one right behind us. Oh, boy. Uh, flip to my router right there. So those antennas right there would probably be close to about a 14 dBi. Not that dramatically different than a UHF whip. Okay. So the antennas that you're u- looking at at a UHF space, those are high gain antennas to us. Right. So you don't have to worry about like having to put these monstrous antennas on there to get good range. Interesting. Wow. Um, so you could definitely, I think these are 3 dBi uh, antennas, so you can put some nice big 14-inch ones, and you're going to get some tremendous range out of these right. systems. Excellent. So also, that's also when we're talking about range and we're talking about power output and all this kind of stuff, what antennas are you using? So environmental space, what antennas are you using? I mean, there's so many factors, and there's so many things that you can do out there to make it uh, in your favor to get more range. For sure. I have another question here. Someone's asking, uh, Nathan is asking, no internal backup recording on the transmitters, right? That would be too much to ask for, I'm sure. I, I might be able to help you with this oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's an easy one. I'm not. Not going to happen, buddy. Uh, <laughs> Zaxcom has uh, a patent on that right now. Yeah, so. he's innovative. Glenn was a, a true innovative genius when mm-hmm. he came up with that Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's that been around for, believe it or not, about 10 to 12 years 15. now. 15. Is it 15 now? Nearly, I think they originally came up with the concept in 2003. Mm-hmm. Glenn was an innovative genius when he came up with that. Yep. I was working with Zaxcom at NAB when they first released the silver ones that had the recording recording built in. Yeah. So those are the only systems currently on the market that will transmit and record at the same time, I believe if you're purchasing in America. In America, in, yeah. In America. Um, but yeah, so it's not saying that it won't ever be in these systems, but it isn't in here now. Um, maybe in the future you could have it where it doesn't transmit, but it records like some other systems that are out on the market. But Potentially. You know, that's that's but that's a hardware change. That could be a different model. That could be a different model. Um, that could be uh, something well down the line. I'll tell you, it has been <laughs> it has been a labor of love to get these things completed mm-hmm. uh, as fast as we have. Yeah. Um, but that is something that maybe, you know, model two or an expansion model that works within the Deity Connects family yeah. with a separate transmitter that you can buy aftermarket. Interesting. Um, but right now, you know, we're, we're not exactly looking toward that. I'll tell you, uh, if that is a feature you want, Zaxx comes out there. I mean, we're not going to sit there and ignore the fact that our competition has some really good products out there. Mm-hmm. And Zaxx come did a really good job with that stuff. They did. They did a very good job with it. Um, all right, we got a couple more questions here, and even a couple comments. It says, uh, Stefan says, really neat that they have built-in lithium. Saves you from having to buy more and add on cables and BDS systems, etc. You can just charge them. You want to talk about a BDS system, go to, go to your local uh, Best Buy and get yourself a USB hub. That's pretty much all you need. Done. Just a couple extra yeah, and USB now that the, outs. Now that the, uh, the Mix Pre 3 and, and 6 and 10, mm-hmm. they all take USB-C as power. Yep. 
And I mean, there's these USB-C batteries that are coming out mm -hmm. that actually take advantage of what USB-C can offer. Exactly. Yeah, you're just buying a, a really nice cell phone battery yep. and some USB cables, and that's going to get your kit started. That's it. You know. Yeah. And in fact, another person here is asking. Emmanuel Clement is asking lithium built-in battery. There's no problem with airport authorities. No. Nope. No. 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 Uh, we're looking at 2,000 milliwatts. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's about the same size as some most cell phones, mm -hmm. unless you're talking about the premium quality cell phones out right. there that are pushing things like the Note 9 and everything. Exactly. Yeah. But even going a little bit further than that, guys, if you're worried about taking batteries on a plane, uh, the watt hour rating is 92 watt hours. As 98. Long, is it 98? 98. My apologies, 98. So as long as your battery is below that amount, you can carry it with you on the plane and you can use it. Yeah, uh, I think anything it's bigger you, than that, you're in trouble. Yeah, anything bigger than that, I think you're limited to two. Right. And then one, are limited to two spares, and one is installed in your uh, unit itself. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to tape up connectors and everything. So, you know, this is literally like taking on three cell phones in your pocket. Yeah, this, this is, is so small, deal. so so minutia in terms of the power that's being drawn from these batteries. Absolutely. There's not going to be, you're not going to have a, an airplane go, <laughs> like, lost and... No, ah, no, no. These deity, definitely... damn you. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen, everybody. <laughs> no, these are definitely uh, just about what your cell phone's doing. Can the receiver be set to receive the transmitter left and right on separate RX channels? I believe, uh, you know what, we might need you to re-ask that question, okay, Benjamin. Okay, so this is a really interesting question. Is that the stereo hop? Is that what he's so talking about? what he's talking about is can a transmitter that mm -hmm. is transmitting stereo have isolated outputs? Mm -hmm. The answer is yes. Excellent. Um, what we do is we actually put it on two different pins on the output. Mm -hmm. So you can actually isolate it itself. Uh, that cable is not included, but if you use a TRS cable and you're going into a DSLR, you're going to get a left and right mix recorded separately. Okay, excellent. It doesn't mix the, the signal together. Let's look at the back of this for a second, if you don't mind. And these are TRSs again, right? These are TRS cables. Okay. Um, very easy to solder everyone. Very easy to solder. That's why we did it. Yep. Also, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, finding a TRS cable is a lot easier than yeah, trying to sure. find a TA3 mm -hmm. or a TA4. Yep, exactly. And that's what we did. We thought about the fact that if you're out there in the middle of a, uh, a shoot, if you're traveling and you need to just run into a gas station to pick up what's called an auxiliary cable, Yeah, you can do that and still like plug that into yeah. a couple of devices you may be carrying. If you carry like a backup recorder, like an H1 right. or an F1, you can just plug one of those into a backup recorder and still be up and running. Because it might not have the locking, but you're not going to be dead in the water. You're not water. dead in the water like you would be if you had a TA3 or a TA4 and you're in the middle of nowhere. And now you have to have a $50 cable rushed to you that might not right. be on the the cable wall because everybody buys those cables every single day so now you have to have one rush made and shipped to you and it right. costs 150 dollars for the cable right stress we wanted to use cables that we knew people could get all around the world yeah for sure they are balanced out individuals a and b uh when you pair the units if you have multiple transmitters you start pairing it you can actually change whether or not it's the a or the b okay um, you can also mix it. Okay, so it's not hard default. This is my A. Yeah. This is my no, B. absolutely not. Boom. <laughs> the, and these can work with another system because they're yeah. frequency agile. They will connect. Absolutely. Okay, very uh, good. We also mixed it together so you can put A and B on one output. So if you're going into a DSLR, yeah, I can put this on the left side of the DSLR, this on the right side of the DSLR. Okay. Um, so there's all these different options. It's all actually, we have a small routing menu for these outputs built into the receiver. Excellent. Well, you know what? Let's start going into it. What do you think would be best? Should we go into the receiver right now? Let's start with the transmitter. Let's start, start with the transmitter. With the, just like you Signal would. flow. Signal flow. Absolutely. Oh, you know what? We got a couple more questions couple before more we questions. do that. We got okay. to keep it coming, guys. Have you tested this in an environment full of Teradek, and how did it work out? Uh, you know, here's the interesting thing. So we've tested this environment uh, that, that did not have Teradek brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we tested this at IBC, and, and I'll tell you, it did, it did not go really well, mm -hmm. especially when your booth is next to a follow focus booth with 15 follow focuses going. Yeah. But at the same time, that's unrealistic for most sets. Yeah. And people, <laughs> You're not going to have, I mean, it's, it's, when we're talking about how many Teradex are you allowed to get up in the air, and there's some yeah. real, this goes back to that range question. Uh, evaluate your set. For sure. Most Teradex now, I think, are actually on the 5.8 gigahertz system. They're right. no longer on 2.4. Yep. Same with all the drones and everything, yeah. too. A lot of that shifted to 5.8. 
Uh, follow focuses are still on 2.4, and they're actually analog. What most people don't know is those are not frequency hopping. Mm -hmm. So once they turn on their signal, they're locked into their frequency, mm -hmm. whereas we're frequency hopping and we're bouncing around. Gotcha. Um, so one follow focus, not a big deal. Right. And In most, fact, that was called your, I have it written down here, adaptive frequency hopping. Correct. That's what you, and is that trademarked? Is that, that's no, your no, thing? No, no, no. That's, that's a, just that's something a, that does. That's a standard. Okay. Um, that you can actually integrate into your 2.4 gigahertz wireless. That's excellent. Uh, and that's the same thing that Bluetooth does, but on a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. They're not doing as many channels as we're doing. We're doing nine. Gotcha. Uh, five that are, are the core channels and four that get auditioned okay. in between every other hop. Um, but that's the thing is we're hopping around a lot of that um, to avoid those kinds of frequencies when they pop up in the air. Most sets are not going to have you know more than one, maybe two wireless follow focuses, which may limit you not being able to put up you know let's say eight of these transmitters in the air. You may only get a, a, maybe four to six, depending on what brand is out there. Gotcha. But one is not going to really just destroy your day, mm -hmm. you know, like it is uh, with some other brands because yeah. you may be sharing a frequency with that wireless follow focus. Absolutely. Um, so that's something you really got to think about is what is what kind of set you're going to be on uh, and what the average kind of set you're you're definitely working in. For sure. Um, it's unrealistic uh, when it trade shows to expect good range because you, there is yeah. zero coordinating. You can't. You can't because literally everyone is there. There's every single manufacturer, including manufacturers in other countries you've never heard of that, that don't have regulations. That do not. Oh, that's, yeah. That's the other thing is uh, you go to these big broadcast trade shows and a lot of these wireless following focuses do not go through proper testing. Mm -hmm. Most of them we would consider illegal here in the U.S. Yep. Uh, but they get imported anyway through third-party uh, websites. eBay. Yep. Uh, so it, it's you really got to look at the kind of set you're on. Uh, 15 follow focuses is, is not a good way to test a system. I mean, look at UHF. When you're at UHF and you're at IBC or you're at uh, NAB, you could be at a booth and just one guy sitting there and just scrolling through every single channel, destroying everyone around him at oh. 100 milliwatts. Yeah, for sure. Uh, which definitely happens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, there is no coordinating at some of those venues. So a lot of those people, they do hardwire or what they do is they just stay within five feet. Absolutely. And our system uh, handles that actually pretty well. Excellent. Excellent. Another person is asking, late to the party, can you use your phone to change settings like other systems? I guess there's a... Don't need to. Don't need the, to. Yeah, the receiver does it all. Excellent. Uh, that's one of the things, like, like there are some sets, and I've heard of rules on sets now where people all put their cell phones away, mm -hmm. and no one's allowed to touch your cell phone on a film set. Yep. And that is becoming, I want to say, more the norm. But I'm hearing more stories about directors insisting on that. Yeah, it's, it actually just happened to me. The last job that I did, I've been working on this all-access job, but I had that car commercial in the middle, and they were like, you're not allowed to bring your phone out. They did put stickers all over every single camera. Absolutely. And they were just like, you're, you're not allowed to pick it. If we see you on Facebook, you're fired. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it is kind of interesting. Yes, you can have that debate with them saying, well, this is a piece of equipment for me. But, you know, it, it just, it, you know, it brings a conflict to, to when you're working with somebody where it's just easier to go, no problem, this equipment can handle what I need it to do. Of, a lot of the apps that I use, I installed onto my Kindle, mm -hmm. which does not have cell phone connectivity, and the camera is garbage anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was operating a lot on tablet that was really crippled for that purpose, because no one's going to sit there and go, oh, he's on a tablet, and he's mm -hmm. sitting there on Facebook. Uh, you're really only doing your apps. But at the same time... Um, you're always next to your receiver. Exactly. It's so always we were in like, front of put you. put it in front of the receiver. That's why we got the benefit of the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, plus, you have full range. I don't. A lot of the cell phone apps on the market run off Bluetooth. And one of the problems with Bluetooth is you're limited to like 30 feet max in good condition. Once you start putting some of these receivers behind metal, though, yeah. your 30 feet is more like 5 or 10. Mm -hmm. And with this, I mean, you've got full range. I'm going into this antenna from this antenna. Um, so I've got full range of the system. This also has a 100 milliwatt transmitter built into it. Wow, it does as well. So it's a transceiver. Yeah, they're both transceivers. Excellent. So there is a receiver built in here. So when I change a command at a transmitter, I'm sending it out from here at 100 milliwatts to here. Yeah. That's your range. Boom. Uh, so none of this, I have to go and walk all the way up to talent and, and kind of fiddle with my phone. 
standing next to them awkwardly, I just literally dial up a setting and just send it over. Is there an audible artifact when the channel hops to another one if it notices interference and it adaptive frequency jumps? So it's adaptive frequency jumping literally every 1.5 milliseconds. Okay. So it's it's continually doing oh, it. Oh, it's continually doing it. Okay. Uh, so there is no artifact. I mean, that's not a thing because it's data packets. So you're thinking in the sense of, and this is something we need to Serial talk about. Serial transmission. Right. That's something that we really did very differently. That's why we're calling the system Data Connect connect to the world differently because everything we've done is very different than what's come before. Yeah. Serial uh, transmission is when you have an interrupt, you hear it almost immediately in right. the interrupt. Uh, with this, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, we actually do data packets. Um, and if a data packet is interrupted, the next two to three data packets actually include that missing data. So there's a little small buffering system that stores it there for a second literally and puts it on the next couple of packets. So when those packets get delivered, it takes that, pulls it out, puts it right back into the stream where it should have been, and you just have seamless, lossless data. So it ha it's so, like, almost like an RF redundancy. Exactly. Excellent. That's so it's cool. all time-stamped mm -hmm. uh, redundancy in little time slots as it's hopping around. Right. And it plans the next 70 hops in advance. Is there a protocol to determine priority when signal hopping? That is to say, if I'm on set, you know, I'm going to try to hit C more. It doesn't seem to be working on my thing. Uh, let's just say it from there. Is there a protocol to determine priority when signal hopping? And I think the answer is no, because it just does it. Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Talk so to me. we do have the five core channels. Uh, when it powers on, it does a quick scan of the 2.4 gigahertz space. And it goes, ooh, these five are well, you know, below squelch in the terms of RF noise. Mm -hmm. We're going to call these the core channels that we hop between. The good ones. The good ones, okay. right? And then it's going to look and go, here's four that also look pretty good, maybe not as good, but we're going to try them out and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And if they work out really well, they may become the core. And it's always going to be flipping and scanning and flipping and scanning. So this is always always scanning at the same time that it is receiving and transmitting, and it's all happening all at once. Excellent. When people were like, well, can you give us a display as to what channel we're on? I'm like, no, because it's like literally changing every 1.5 milliseconds, yeah. and we may not even hit the same channels twice yeah. for, uh, was it like 20 milliseconds? Gotcha. So it's like, just happening. It, 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 it just goes. It's, it's going so fast. By the time anything would come up on your display, it would be irrelevant and out of date. Amazing. Because we're talking at the at the micro, uh, the millisecond level we're hopping. Right. So there is a question that is a follow-up for that one, and it does deal with, with all of that RF frequency uh, redundancy mm -hmm. that, that we're talking about, RF redundancy. Um, what about latency? I know that a lot of people are very concerned about that. A lot of people are concerned about latency. I and understand you know what? that. Talk to us about what latency is for anybody that who might not know. Okay, so latency is the idea that when I actually make a noise in, I'm going to call it the real world. Okay. I make a noise in the real world in front of this lavalier. Uh, the idea is that this arrives here and comes out the output within zero milliseconds that would be instant, instant right instant that's the goal mm -hmm. and in analog it was really close yeah very close it it's because it's close. almost at the speed of well it's at the speed of sound or exactly. the speed of electricity once it gets yeah. into the into the machine yeah correct me if i'm wrong guys uh and it happened like incredibly fast to the point where like it was unnoticeable and we just called it zero milliseconds right um with digital you have encoding of audio you have uh, transmission of audio, retransmission of audio, timestamps, and then sliding it all back in so it's seamless and lossless. Mm -hmm. The idea is to mimic the best concept of what we think is a single flow of audio. The best way to do that when the digital space um, is because you may have some packet loss. Uh, you, you need to delay the signal a little bit so you have time for retransmissions. Right. Um, as well as encoding. So technically there is like DSP and there's some other stuff going on in here. This preamp is doing a lot more than just a normal preamp because the signal needs to become a digital signal into the air and not just uh, an analog RF signal that is literally mimicking the exact waveforms of the audio that came in. Okay. Um, so we, we gain some benefits to actually having latency. 
and this is the weirdest part again, like I said, connect to the world differently is our slogan for this product. Because as soon as you wrap your head around the fact that latency is not bad, mm -hmm. and you start to see the benefits of latency. The benefits of latency is retransmission. Retransmission means in the old system of analog uh, wireless, you had a squelch. Okay. And RF noise, uh, you know, kind of was in the background. And if your signal got beneath squelch, it just kind of quietly turned on a mute. So you didn't hear the RF noise hiccup in the system, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you could set your squelch to whatever it wanted to be. And some systems required you to have almost zero RF noise just to pull off a decent signal. Right. Especially the cheaper units out there. You know, because they were underpowered and they weren't able to fight the RF noise. When, and this is something that happens to everyone's uh, life every single day, and they probably don't even realize it, is when you look at HDTV signals over the air coming from towers, you may turn on your television and it says no signal. Yep. Well, that's not exactly true. There is signal. It's just beneath the squelch. It's beneath the noise. It, it is beneath the squelch in the sense that it doesn't have enough of the data to put together a full picture at full frame rate. Right. So it just says zero. Yep. In analog TV days, it would have been like a fuzzy picture. Yeah. Right? So it, it it's the goal of latency is actually to decrease the squelch. Mm -hmm. Because by retransmitting, we can actually have packet loss and it not actually affect us at all. Wow. So the idea is with the retransmission and the latency that we have, uh, which is 19 milliseconds, same as some of the other brands out there on the market, uh, it allows us to actually get more range because we can have up to two-thirds packet loss without it actually being a problem. Uh, and again, what this means is you can actually have stream -less or, or, or seamless stream of audio without any loss because of that latency. Now, as soon as you get past the idea that there is a little bit of echo when someone's standing right next to you when you're wearing the headphones, if soon as you start to get into the habit of just doing a sound check from 10 feet away, let them do the rehearsal, that echo disappears almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you delay the boom coming in by that 19 milliseconds, your analog sources play very friendly with the digital space. And a lot of the recorders out there, um, you know, your, your Sound Device 6 Series and your Zaxcom and everything, have a time code offset. You just also need to set to. And no one, as soon as you go in the post, no one will know that there was any latency. Okay, so it is definitely something that you're saying that they will have to work with if they're working on a time code pertinent shoot. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, but even if you're not working on a time code pertinent shoot, you just need to do a delay on the boom. Okay. Or actually get a wireless boom that can go into one of our transmitters and you don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, very good. Very um, good. But again, like it's one of these things, as soon as you realize time is relative in the space of production. Sure in the sense of, we're talking literally milliseconds <laughs> is relative, uh, you can actually gain higher quality, uh, bigger packets of data so that you can actually get uncompressed audio mm -hmm. directly off the microphone. And uh, Compression, if you want lower latency, you actually have to get like severe compression going on in order to pull this all off. Gotcha, okay. So yeah, I mean, there's um, some benefits to latency that I think a lot of people ignore yeah, and that we really take advantage of. Copy. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, guys. Let's it's very different. It's very different concept for a lot of people to realize. I realize it's it's probably a lot of people out there are like I don't, I still don't get it. And I yeah, there's a that. few people that are even right now. They, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of question marks Alex. going on and stuff like that. And you know what? I think that we will probably even do a follow up about latency if if people are that concerned about it to talk about you know what we can do to optimize the system to make sure that when you use it you're not having delays you're not having calls from production going why is this not syncing up or yeah. whatever because there are ways to make sure that it does. And even then when people are like it's not syncing up uh, we're talking still less than half a frame mm -hmm. so we're still talking well within uh, syncing purposes of time code. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're talking minor, minor minutia millisecond delays here that most people are concerned when they hear 19 milliseconds because they're used to zero. Mm -hmm. But we're still talking less than half a frame right. off. And most people are, I mean, that's, that's negligible exactly. in the grand scheme of things when you're syncing up in post. For sure. So, guys, it's time to get into these guys. Yeah. Why don't we start and talk about the transmitter so let's go over that one a little bit more maybe you can even rotate Let me it go like up to the top of the menu okay there we go and how did you get into the menu you just press the menu button I right there press the menu button okay very good Everybody so the see. very top of the menu i'm going to come around so i can see myself oh yeah for sure 
Very top of the menu is the mic sensitivity. So you can actually check. Oh, it just went to sleep a little bit. Yeah, so we saved that battery life. Uh, we let you turn the screen off. Okay. So that, you know, you don't have this nice bright blue OLED mm -hmm. and sends on, on your... Just eating the voltage. Eating the voltage, but also just showing up on camera. Mm -hmm. This makes it easier. So you can actually go from plus 21 dB of gain, which is actually fairly hot, um, to actually a negative uh, 12. Okay. So when you're going in line level signal, you can actually drop some stuff here and kind of... Uh, get a lot of control. We also have a someone was asking about the limiter. So yeah, this is good. There next you go. next setting. Here's the There's limiter. limiter. And okay. you just turn it on. Now, do you know any of the settings for the limiter? Is it, uh, right now? I mean, I'm assuming that we can get those specifics. Uh, yeah, I can get those specifics to you in a bit. Um, it's it's a little complicated because it's digital limiter. Yeah, I was just going to say it's a digital limiter. It's a digital limiter. I believe it drops a signal, so it doesn't let you go above negative 12 dB on a VU meter. Um, it's a fairly hard limiter, and we designed it that way so that you can really scream into it. And I'll tell you, with the SPL of the system and then that digital limiter, it is very hard to clip at the transmitter. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing some screaming tests last night, and it was kind of fun. Wow. Um, low cut. We've got two flavors of low cut, 75 and 150. These are a little bit more aggressive low cuts than what most people have. Okay. And we did that because we like the curve uh, when it actually does finally hit your 60 hertz or 50 hertz for electricity and that kind of things and hums in the air. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more aggressive and takes care of that for you in the system. Okay. So it's got that nice knee at the top with a nice curved knee. And then it's finally when it hits the 50 and the uh, 60, it, it does a nice hard hit on those. Okay. So we'll turn that off because it's a very quiet room. And then this was something that's a unique feature that we added that... Uh, frequency boost. Frequency boost. What do you think that is? Uh, man, are you adding amplifier gain or something? We like? are. Wow. So we actually have a gain that adds everything above uh, 7,000 hertz. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, like what we do right now, you and I have these little wind muffs on, on, yep. on these microphones, right? So when you start bearing lavaliers, a lot of lavs get real muffled and yeah. bassy and, and muddy. For sure. We allow you to kind of fight through some of that and try to reclaim some of that at your transmitter. Very cool. It's kind of like, you know, the Sennheisers and all of these mics that have the, the high gain on it where they you have can the high flip gain. it so you can compensate for your fuzzies. Right. So some of those have like little caps that go on the mics or they're just baked into the microphone capsule itself that is always going to be that nice bright signal. Wow. Well, not all mics have that. So we wanted to give you something that actually allows you to add that peak into the frequency spectrum of the microphone signal. Very cool. Uh, here. Because the lobs that we give you are actually fairly flat. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have a mute feature. You can actually turn uh, mute on and off in the menu. Okay. Uh, RF, RF power. power. Very good. So we actually have, as you can see, we have 10, 25, 50, and 100. Okay. And we also have something called auto. Auto RF actually does the adjusting because remember, these are always scanning. Both units are scanning and transmitting. Right. Uh, which means if this unit says, hey, I'm not getting enough signal, my receiver is feeling a little weak, I, I don't want to get RF hits, uh, can you bump the signal up automatically for me? This receiver will then tell the transmitter, hey, bump up your signal a little bit. That's actually going to get you a little bit better life. Oh. If you're doing stuff like sit-down interviews or ENG work, you're always operating within that 10 to 20 feet kind of range. You're always really close to talent and all that kind of stuff. You don't need 100 milliwatts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Drop it down the auto and let the system kind of run the system uh, gain for you on your RF because what that means is you can get more than that 10 hours of battery life. Mm hmm User ID, we User talked about ID. that earlier. Before so, it said one, two, three, four, five. Now it, now says, it says high. High. Uh, pair. All you do is literally hit pair and you hit OK. You hit pair on your receiver, hit OK, and you've paired the units. Boom. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then remember, all the frequencies and all that kind of stuff are taken care of you by the actual processors. It's, it's not an infrared pair, it's a Wi Fi pairing. Uh, well, it, it's over the RF. Uh, it's over the, it's, it's over over the, the RF. RF. Yeah, okay. because it's not a Wi-Fi protocol. Yeah, it's, t it's not technically Wi-Fi. I, I stand yeah. corrected, everybody. It's, it's not a Wi-Fi protocol. It's, it's just a, using that spectrum. It's using that spectrum Okay. to do the pair. It's Very saying, good. I'm in discovery mode. Hey, I'm looking to discover. Let's shake hands. Gotcha. Hey, I see something on that frequency. Oh, it actually is a BP transmitter. Yes, I'll pair it to you. Yes. It's literally having those uh, yeah. computer... Yep. solving problems it's, that it's doing it's looking for that little encrypted signal hey i've got the key you know i've i've got the signal let's let's hook up yeah for and sure and boom we pair 
Someone's asking about the sizes and stuff like that. Guys, this is the, uh, the smallest form factor that they have right now. Uh, are you ever planning on doing a smaller form factor? You know, uh, we, we originally toyed with the idea of doing a smaller form factor. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is all of a sudden that battery life drops down. And it's hard. <laughs> the issue is it's hard. Surprisingly, that's not, I mean, uh, it's not as hard as you think. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's 2.4, I mean, if you look at 2.4 gigahertz devices, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of small Bluetooth devices that are tiny out there. Right. But you end up having to pair them with tiny little batteries, and you're looking at now a few hours of transmission power. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what would you rather have? A smaller transmitter that's half the size and only like three to five hours of battery? Or now do you want something that is 10 hours of battery? Right. We went for the battery life as the first product in the lineup. We potentially could go smaller, mm -hmm. but... For the most part, for this clientele, yeah. this is not needed. This is yeah, not your narrative. You're not putting something on Iron Man in the back of his helmet or whatever it is. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. People need to understand that you know, whenever you go smaller, you have to compensate for things. And you're right. That's where you're compensating is the size of the battery size for the voltage. Size of the battery, and it, it drops dramatically yeah. and real quick. Because all the technology is the same. They're just putting it on a smaller circuit board, making the traces smaller, closer together, which means there's more risk that something could go wrong. And then than the size of the battery. And at the same time, I mean, there's a couple of small transmitters already on the market uh, from our competitors that do a really good job. And the and the productions that need those productions or need those kinds of products yeah, have them. For sure. We're not actually looking to sit there and try to compete. We're trying to find uh, a space in which has been neglected. And we think that ENG space has really not been evolved in lately. For sure. So if you're doing the narrative filmmaking and you're out there uh, where you're having to throw up eight channels of wireless, 12 channels of wireless, and you're having to mic people up in costumes that are nearly impossible to mic up. Mm -hmm. There's some great products out there on the market. Um, we, we're, it's just we're probably not going to be in that space uh, in the next year or two. For sure. We got somebody saying here, how many of these uh, could you use at the same time? And somebody's saying just one. That's not true. What? That's not true. How many no. systems can you use? So there's 18 different channels we can hop between on our frequency spectrum. Uh, we think it's safe to say that you can go uh, four to six. Mm -hmm. Andrew, hand me my coffee. It's been too far away for too long. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we can definitely say we can go from four to six uh, transmitters up in the air at once because you got also got to factor in the fact that the receiver is a transmitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the bi-directional communication. And when you slave them all together, all the receivers act as one transmitter. Right. So that's one. And then you have four to six uh, tr other transmitters in the air. You're talking seven transmitters technically are, okay. are up in the air at the same time. That's that's actually quite a bit. Gotcha. So they're all kind of going back and forth and, you know, I'm on this frequency now, now I'm not, now I am, now I'm not. And just, yeah. just going back and forth and they're all kind of just doing it together. Yeah. And they're just it's like a hive mind kind of concept. Copy that. Um, and that's what happens when you plug in that USB-C cable to all the different receivers is they start to all talk to each other like a hive mind. Okay. Very um, good. So we can get up to probably about six. Okay. Uh, given the environment. Uh, and you do have to use the sync cables. We're not talking uh, six receivers or, or three receivers that are separated. That's three receivers in one bag actually doing the communication. Right. To, and even to further that again, if we go back to the back side, you had that sync cable. Is that right? Yeah. So we have this USB-C uh, sync cable that goes in. So I'll call this unit the master. Jeff, this is answering your question right now. So this is how you would basically daisy chain. And if you notice, you can still power the unit yeah. Uh, while you're doing things, and then this would be the one that would go to the second receiver. Second receiver. And then you would do it again. And you do it and again. You do it again. Yeah. Gotcha. So that way you'd have all three connected, kind of like the QRX100 with the serial loop. Only it's not two USBs where one's going to the next and then to the next. It's just kind of daisy chaining through the same port. Yeah. Uh, because there's 24 pins in the USB-C connector. 24 uh, pins. 24 pins. Three Jesus, power. Jesus, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. Man. But when a lot of people are like, why'd you use USB-C? Why did you not give us something else, like a, a DC port? I'm like, yeah, because there's, there's two, there's two way conductors more, there's versus... There's way more going on in there than what most people think. Because you also can do firmware updates. We will be rolling out firmware updates as these units get more use and people report bugs or any other little features that they want to add. Uh, we were doing firmware updates and even comes with the kit 
you get a little USB-C, uh, the Type A okay. adapter, Very and good. it literally just plugs right into the bottom of Boom. the unit. Very and now cool. all of a sudden you can just plug in a little USB C stick or a USB C stick or just a USB A type uh, USB stick. Yeah, that would just plug right into the computer. Yep. Done. Oh no 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 the oh, not even. no no. So you do a little thumb drive. You just do a little thumb drive. Oh okay okay. And you literally Copy. update off the thumb drive. Copy. So you use the computer, put it on a thumb drive, take it, go whoop right into there, plug it into the back, yep. and turn it on. And, and you're it just would plugging know. this into all the different units and doing your firmware updates. Okay. Um, and that's what we were doing that last night. We did a couple of firmware updates last night to do uh, some updates and tests and everything with some new firmware we've been playing with. Very good. Recharge time, Alex, is one hour on USB-C. A 45 minutes to an hour will get you at 100 milliwatt, 10 hours, Did you, is that what yeah. it was? Yeah, very good. 10 hours at 100 milliwatts, USB type C. We're looking at a one hour charge time uh, using Qualcomm 2.0 or 3.0 to quick charge. Very good, very good. All right, let's keep going. How many more settings? Did we go through all the menu settings? I think we were at the almost at the very end, so it tells you what firmware we are. Okay, okay. So we, so, yeah, we were at the pair, and then we went to okay, and then firmware you can and see update. where you do your update. And gotcha. if I actually select into this, it tells you to insert the uh, USB stick. Yep. And it has a little mini from there, and then underneath you actually have screen lock. The auto so lock, like 15, time, seconds, 15 it seconds. It shuts down. I'm gonna turn this to a couple of minutes. Yeah, just so you don't have to keep pressing it. Uh, hotkey. So the power button also acts as a hotkey. A quick short press actually makes it allow you to do other things. Cool. Right now, like a come, shortcut to do something. Like a shortcut. So that is actually how we're doing our mute button. Very. You want to actually make that a mute button. So th uh, technically, if you've got talent and is notorious for hitting the mute button, mm -hmm. you can actually just turn the mute button so it doesn't actually do anything. There you go. Um, in the future, this may actually be a hotkey for other things. If people are like, man, I really wish I had X, Y, and Z at one press button. Cool, we could probably enable that. Yeah. We don't know what that is right now. We came up with mute, but now that the community will have the units here in a couple of months and they start telling us what they want for to sure. change in the firmware, we'll be able to do those firmware updates. I definitely have one idea for you. I okay. Guys, let me know what you guys think of this one or if you have a better idea too, is that we need to be able to put this on a referee and when he doesn't have it touched, it's talking to all of his referee friends. But when he presses the mute button, now it goes live and it sends the output out of the other channel. So you'd only be using one transmitter, mm. but send one channel out here and one channel out there. One for like the comms and one for the live feed. And you'd press it to make it go live. That way they can just like go, hey, let me talk to you. for. Oh, okay, cool. Now I'm live talking to everybody. Oh, that's do you know what real. I mean? I do. Um, and actually, given the fact that we've got multiple outputs and it's all routable menu, that's actually probably possible. Right. Um, that there is a possibility that we can actually uh, in engage that. Cool. That's one of the great things about these systems, guys, is that they have, you know, software developers that are working on it. It's a lot of this is firmware now, since so now that the hardware is done, so they can make these upgrades and get it out to you guys. So, uh, and that's one of the great things about having Andrew Jones is that he will find you posting about this stuff <laughs> and he will clearly get things solved. That's, that's for sure. A, that's a really interesting, like I'm really sitting here going, okay, we got the, you got to do, do that. I'm, one, I'm right? doing, I'm doing the firmware in my head already. Yeah. Kind of right. Like, okay, what do we got to change to make that possible? What it may actually end up being a, a requiring you to use a stereo lavalier. Mm -hmm. So we may have to use like a left capsule. Okay. And a right capsule. And we're only muting and turning on and off the left channel. Mm -hmm, so like, mm -hmm. I'm already kind of got some. Okay. Yeah, yeah, could definitely. Probably it'd be a, do it'd that. be a great feature to have, or some type of implementation of it. So. so, and then underneath we have language, and we will be rolling out multiple languages for this mini. Right now, we're just doing English, uh, but we will be rolling out other languages through more firmware updates. Buenísimo, <laughs> very good. That's excellent. I think the deity should give everyone this product for free. It is a new year after all. Stephen Harrod. Nice try. Technically, it's not a new year. Not uh, anymore. Is it the Chinese New Year? My New Year's coming up in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's how I look at it. Because <laughs> uh, I get to celebrate, too. Exactly. So talk to us now about the receiver. Let's go so let's and look, look at this look at the guy. receiver. Okay. Um, Whoop. I'm getting a phone call oh. here. Someone's watching. They're like, I'm going to try to get Thomas yep. Pop to have his phone go off. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. So I'm going to hit menu. Okay. First thing you see, we actually come into a pretty... Uh, Interesting menu in the sense of we actually have the receiver, transmitter A, transmitter B, and the auto lock for the screen. Okay. Um, auto lock is on never, so you can basically get it to where any of the buttons the don't screen do will, anything. Well, no, this screen will never go to sleep. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Okay. Very good. Um, so first thing I'll do is I'm actually going to go into transmitter A. 
Okay. And the reason why is I want to show you every single setting in that transmitter is right there on that receiver. Whoa. Okay. So you don't have to be on the transmitters to touch everything. You can do it right from here. Every single setting. Very cool. Um, Every single setting except for like firmware updates and oh yeah things. that one that one makes sense if you're updating your firmware in the middle of a take God help you yeah so like I can do the username the RF power and mute I can do frequency boost low cut limiter and mic sensitivity and I can't even see what I'm got yeah uh, you got transfer sleep. sleep mic level limiter low cut mm -hmm. yep so literally everything that I want is right there as soon as I hit back I'm back into my menu and I can go down to B or I can go up to uh, the receiver very cool so. very nice buttons they've got a lot of push to them we also made the buttons yellow the idea was when you're in a bag and it's a little dark yeah the buttons do stick out exactly uh, we wanted to make the buttons so that they're nice and visible at uh, a dark environment because that's often where we sound mixers end up trying to go and hide on set for sure away from everyone yeah exactly <laughs> for sure so as you can see we have the uh, out level okay uh, so you can do output mic level, line level type of deal? Of A and B, okay. separate. Individual separate. So, so you just like, select it, like I want B out, press menu, and then just kind of go up and, okay, and then you'd select what you want. Copy yeah. that. And it goes pretty far down. It goes down to minus 51 dB, so that's definitely more of a mic level. And then obviously you've got all the way up to, what is it, plus 6, I think it said? I think plus, so. Wow, plus 15 so that's oh. a lot of gain. So you, you know, it's probably, what, a 0 dB around line level? Have you tried putting in, like, a line level tone? Uh, we've still got a lot of tests. I mean, okay. these literally came off the factory yesterday afternoon. Very cool. Uh, and we were doing the firmware updates in the office and everything. Wow. So we're, we're still really doing a lot of testing. That's mm -hmm. why we're saying that it's a pre-NAB kind of launch for yeah. this product. Uh, we're going to give some units out for beta. Uh, here in the next month, and we're going to get some people out there really giving us a lot of feedback. So I get time, to take this one to the to the Manny Pacquiao event, right? <laughs> I, I, you want it? <laughs> but sure, why not? I'm you know? I'm not uh, I'm not against. It. I'm not going to lie. That's we'll see what we can do. Maybe maybe not on fight night, but you know yeah. we'll see. Uh, you know what I mean? A camera hump. Yeah, for sure. Why not? I mean, yeah. you've got some great systems. I'm not going to we'll lie. We'll play There's, with it. You've got some great systems here. I'm always down for new toys. So we've got the different outputs individual to okay. uh, to each output. Uh, and like I said, we've got mono and stereo, and we have this little router menu system in here. So you can do mono, and you can actually choose balanced, or you can actually do DSLR mono, so that if you want to put a headphone into one output, and then the output of another one into a DSLR, you can do that. Really? Okay, so this kind of becomes your mixer. Right, and a lot of people are like, yeah, they can't drive a headphone. I was driving my 7506s out of this thing. Really? Okay, so it does have, well, it has up to plus 15 dB right. output. Right. That's hot. That's a lot of juice. Right, so we were driving, you know, some pretty, you know, serious cans with this microphone, uh, or this little output. And it's, it's not bad. So, like, if you're a DSLR operator out there, I know a lot of new units come with headphone jacks, but not all of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so, if you're a DSLR operator, you get a headphone jack, and the other output is identical going into your camera. Yeah. And you're getting that A, B isolated records into your DSLR. Right. So, that's pretty awesome. And wow. it's a full little router menu system in here. So, as I go back, I can also... Uh, also do left, right, uh, B or left, right, A. So if you're doing hops and you only have one transmitter on your bag, mm -hmm. it can go in and do in the hops. Copy that. We have someone saying, when can we expect to see a, a, a Phantom 48 boom transmitter? Um, so that's the interesting thing. We only make one Phantom 48 kind of microphone. That's the S-Mic 2. Everything else runs off 3 volts. Oh, interesting. So if you had the D3 Pro, you just plug that D3 Pro right into this unit and it works. Um, so you could actually do a boom That's using cool. the D3 Pro. Very cool. Because remember, our, our on-camera microphones don't have to live on camera. Mm -hmm. So if you live within the Deity system, it benefits you. We, yeah. we designed this stuff to all work in one giant family. The S-Mic 2 is the only one that doesn't because that's catered toward the very high-end guys that have this kind of transmitter. We're looking at an XLR transmitter. Um, when? I, have, I mean, that's a... It took a year to get this thing kind of uh, from mm -hmm. start in June to where it will be coming out. So I guess 10 months. Mm -hmm. The XLR, I mean, I would... Pretty impressive. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the end of 2019. 
Yeah. Uh, XLR transmitter. Oh, and Darius uh, Labuzek, I apologize if I have ignored you. I didn't mean to. You know what? This thing is scrolling. We literally have had 50 people on this uh, Facebook Live event, yeah. which is more than I've ever had. So this is a lot for me to be uh, paying attention and asking questions and then getting it's, in. It's the two of us and the cats. Yep, that's it. I got Frodo manning the cameras right now. Uh, so the I guess the question once again was uh, the 48 volt boom transmitter so yes so you don't necessarily need to but even if you wanted let's say you wanted to use a cmit 5u could you do it uh yeah what you're going to do is you're going to call up uh psc and you're going to buy one of their nice little phantom power mm -hmm. units just uh, a ps1 power supply yeah yep there and you then go. you just use that and you or, plug it in or uh if you're in the sound devices world go get yourself an mm1 yep and use that and then just pop this onto your mm1 and that way you've got all those kinds of crazy controls, and if you're an analog limiter kind of guy, I get it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, I technically don't get it. I don't get analog <laughs> limiters. I think anyone who knows me on a personal level understands I don't get analog limiters. But I, 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 I understand you people exist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just believe in digitals. There's just so much has been done. There's so much that's been done. I mean, let's face it. 30 years ago or 25 years ago when it really started coming around, yeah. people were like, no, nah, this is a joke. This is never going right. to work. And now it's like, oh, uh, actually, yeah. it, it is going it to is. work, and it's going to be around forever, and it's yeah. going to keep getting better and better and better. Once you start doing things like negative 10 dB pads and you start adding some stuff in your in your signal flow chain, you can get digital limiters pretty 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 far for sure. Um, so yeah, if you're one of those guys that wants the digital limiter on your boom and all that kind of stuff, there's devices out there from sound devices uh, and stuff that you can use the power of those kinds of, of microphones mm -hmm. into our system for sure. Uh, as for like us making just a dedicated XLR transmitter, give us a year. Copy that. <laughs> yeah, we are are still uh, knee deep yeah. in code and firmware Guys, right now. This ain't out yet. Okay, <laughs> you can't even buy this yet. Everybody's like, "Oh my god, it's the best thing in the world!" And it's like, "Yeah, it's great," but you it's, haven't even touched it. I touched it. Like it, we we're it, the only people that have touched this right now. It is the best thing in the world. Though. I want that written yes. down, Thomas. Paul. Absolutely, on the box. slap myself. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, Vincent, good to have you back. I know that you had a problem with the feed. Um, two more questions here. Let's see here. But is that 15 decibels of gain boost, or is that actually plus 15 dBV? Uh, Can you get a little bit more detailed into that question, Alex Harrelson? Basically, I mean, it has... Uh, it, it's, is it digital gain? Is that what he's asking? No, it's analog gain. It's analog gain. It's analog it's gain. It's changing the preamp uh, or the output amp of this. Yeah, so it's analog gain uh, very much in the same way that the circuitry in the D3 Pro is analog gain. Okay. Uh, we're just controlling the gain through digital means right. instead of a uh, analog knob like we did on the D3 Pro. Copy that. Excellent. Jonathan Millette is asking, I would like to see, or actually not asking, he's telling you. He says, I would like to like see that. Deity make a video demonstrating how to set up six transmitters and assigning them to everywhere. Well, why don't we do that when you get a couple more systems? Yeah, when we get a couple more systems, uh, we've got a couple of uh, coming from the factory for us to start doing stuff like that well before the release. So when it comes out, you guys will know that we've tested the heck out of it. Copy that. Very good. Um, Alex is saying line level output of the RX. Um, there, there is no tone currently in the system that you can use to calibrate. It's just kind of turn on and, and adjust. Is that right? Well, I mean, if you got a tone generator, you could plug it into a transmitter and just okay. do normal signal flow. Yep, you could plug in a tone generator right into here and then pass it through and calibrate that way. Absolutely. There's no problem. Um, but with any wireless system, you always want to leave a little bit of headroom in case your actor does get loud. For sure. So I think that's kind of a, uh, a common practice that a lot of people have. That's why when we talk about calibrating the systems, you want to calibrate it kind of to the loudest speaking voice on your set. Mm -hmm. um, just like you would with any other wireless. For sure. Um, I don't know if we really want to get too bogged down into the details of it must be line level, must be all this other stuff. Because when you start getting in that regiment, mm -hmm. uh, it find that it's not flexible enough for when you actually need it. Exactly, yeah. If you just had a mic and a line switch, that's not as good as having variable degrees. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I think uh, it, it is a line level output. Um, you can definitely drop it down into well into mic level. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, uh, yeah, you when you're talking about like is it is it a plus four dB line level? He just said, those? but is the max output on the RX basically just a really hot mic level signal? 
No, 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 no. it's not. No. It's, it's an it's an amplified signal. It's that an is, amplified signal that is now line level. Yeah, no, we can definitely drive headphones with this. So like, mm-hmm. no, it's line level, amplified, really, mm-hmm. really nice, clean signal flow. So it's not the microphone output being amplified where it's increasing in noise floor and stuff. It's a line output that can be attenuated to mic level. Correct. That's is that your answer, Alex? I'm trying to get it for you. Let me know if that answered it. So I, I am assuming you're you're thinking like if I crank this thing to plus 15, I'm going to get a lot of this analog noise in my system because of just the noise of the the quality of the output. And I would say no because you can it starts at line level and then you can attenuate it Correct. down to a mic level signal. So in theory, if you're if you're outputting mic level, the noise floor is getting lower. Correct. Right. So hopefully that answers. I think so. We think so too. Um, please let us know if that isn't right or if somebody has a challenge to that because this is what this is all about at Video Mantis. Um, and and honestly, you're gonna want to attenuate it a little anyway, just to give your uh, preamps on your camera or recording device a little of extra room. So when you're playing with your knobs, mm-hmm. you have a little bit of play in your knobs, um, sure. especially if you're out there and you're on the F8 or the F4. A lot of people aren't using those knobs as faders. They're using them as gain knobs, and that's going to give you a little bit more play in those knobs in those devices. For sure. So you know what? We need to do one more thing because, believe it or not, we're already at an hour and 15 minutes into this. We were supposed to cut a half an hour ago. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because I love the questions, and we're always here for you guys. But we need to hear what this sounds well, like. Let's hear what it sounds like. So what we have here, guys, is we've got our Mix Pre 10T that I just purchased recently uh, right around Christmas. This was my Christmas present. And right now we are using 5 and 6 for our microphones that we're plugged into. But we have 3 and 4, which are A and B, respectfully. So what I'm going to do in a moment here, as soon as we... Okay, he's okay, cool. playing with cool. one. I'm, I'm making sure I've got the right channel, so when I plug it on... All right, so I'm going to turn... Okay. As you can tell, I'm turning down uh, his microphone, so this okay. one no longer works. And now I'm going to turn up his lavalier. Mic check one, two. Mic check go. one, two. And How now you're obviously hearing some delay and stuff because of me, so I'm going to turn my mic down. Why don't you turn mine on? Uh, you're on. Okay, very good. And we'll just do a quick clip on. And you know what? Sorry, guys. We're going to go to one just so you can see what we're doing. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible about what is going on with these systems. Check, check, check. And am I number four? You're number four. Oh, I'm not, am I turned on? How is uh, it? should be. I'm not seeing level right now for me. Check. Oh, we might have been playing with some settings. We played with we a couple played settings. played with a couple of settings. So let's take a look. And you're number four. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's right. Look at your name. On and your maybe make sure that you're outputting a mic level signal, because I have, or I can put you to line. You know what? Why don't we go to line level, like our uh, our good friend Alex was talking about on this stuff. Yeah, because I'm seeing levels on both. Let's see uh, here, guys. Let's check a look. And this is the, plugged in. We're probably. doing everything. Uh, okay, so it is set for line level. There's What's yours. the gain on four? The gain on four is set to 10 as well as three, three and four. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, let me give you, a, I'll give you a little boost. Okay, so, oh, yeah, there, am I number, hold on. Might check one, two. Up on That's me. I'm number three. Guys, we have a little bit of a flip on here, so it means that yours is not getting picked up right now. Maybe we flipped the cables on accident yeah, we might when we were cables. showing everybody things. Give us one second, guys. We had both of these working, but I think that we ended up just flipping a cable a moment ago. I'm plugging and unplugging the stuff. And then make sure you just do your sync if you need to. Let me check. Remember, guys, this is a prototype unit, so we're testing it out with them. We also went through all the settings, so he's just doing a quick look here and seeing what's going on. Did the cable get unplugged or something? I don't think so, but... And then check your gain as well. Like, how's your gain on that? Oh! <laughs> we, have plus, we played with the gain, we and your gain is probably really, really low. That, that's exa- that is exactly it. Uh... So full transparency, every once in a while, I think when you go into a menu, there was like a little dropout 
that happens? Am I, am I assuming that sometimes when you go into a couple settings that might happen, or maybe that's yeah. just a beta software that they're working it's out the a couple things? It's the beta software when you go into menus, it kind of does a little okay. changeover. But yeah, right now, there uh, we go. Now there we got him. So my transmitter was at like negative 20 dB. There you go. And that's not going to work when you're trying to drive a microphone. Exactly. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's uh, what we've got. This is our, our microphone system. This is what it sounds like. This Follow is the, the signal, Bill McCarthy. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long night. If you guys even knew what happened uh, before we hit record. Yeah. Good, good I think golly. I was, we were up till 2 a.m. last night yep. uh, messing with these things, making sure everything was good for the show. And yep. then you were up making sure your system was up and mm -hmm. ready for the show. Exactly. Um, so yeah, now you're hearing our microphones. This is the kit lav, uh, mm -hmm. the W lav that we have also coming out the, the w, w lav the okay. w lav and because we're also going to be selling the w lav separately with okay. micro dot connectors right um that'll also be launched at the same time as this somebody wants a limiter test while we're testing levels so sure. i tell you what let me give you mine I if you don't do, mind and i'll talk for you or do I'm you already or, done. how would you like to do it i'm already done i'm already okay. done. that's that was it so let me get real loud right now. And as you can see, I think if I get really, 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 really loud, I can kind of try to hit that limiter really hard. Uh, what do you think of that? I think that sounds pretty clean. Now I'm hearing a lot of low end. Can you try enabling some of the low cut too? Let's yeah, hear the let differences me, uh, of those. I, I, okay. Hey, check. So Whoop. there we Whoop. go. I've got the 150 Hertz low end turned on on my microphone. What, le what gain do you have for your transmitter currently, by the way? Let me... I was set to 18, which I'm is the 18. second highest. I'm, I'm going to go down to 15 or even 12 for a second. So I'm at 12 now on the decibel, and you're a little bit hotter. Yeah, I'm at 15. Hey! 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 Check. One, two, three, four, five! Yeah, and we're having a very... Like I said, we're having a hard time kind of hitting that limit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just a high SPL mm -hmm. on your capsules, high SPL on your preamp. And then you engage that limiter, and it really does kind of uh, do a lot. Uh, digital limiters have come a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we're just talking normally, I think uh, my volume isn't too dramatically lower than what it was. Uh, I think I just hit a menu. Did you? Are you hitting menus? Nope, oh, no, no, I didn't hit a menu. Okay. Nope. Um, the so, yelling at yourself test, classic. Ha, yep. Funny. <laughs> You got um, to yell at yourself. You got to do the huff factor. I still remember my one of my first days of working at Coffee Sound a long time ago, and Jeff Wexler walked in, and he told me, Thomas, you got to know about the huff test. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, you can't say one, two, three, and I'm like, you got to go huff, huff, huff. And I've just <laughs> never forgotten that. I just always thought that that was the coolest thing in the world. You got to have your average dynamic intensity. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're still coming uh, with this firmware. Uh, I think the stuff we installed last night and have not tested uh, much, but uh, we're probably 90%, 95% there uh, with the firmware. Mm -hmm. We've still got some code that we've got to go through, check for bugs, make sure everything's right, RF outputs, sure. actually what it's supposed to be and all that kind of stuff. For sure. Uh, and guys, I want to say one quick thing because I see a little side commenting going on right now and it's talking about, you know, a little fuzzy on the end distortion. Is there a little bit of distortion from the Deity system or is it happening downstream? I want to tell you guys something right now. This is a live stream with nobody uh, uh, except for the people that are physically, objectively talking to each other, doing all of these tests. So yeah. uh, I'll be honest, we can't objectively listen to ourselves right now. In a perfect world, I would have another sound mixer behind us that would be listening and, and yeah. dialing in these perfect frequencies. So we're doing our best to get a good level mix of this system going to here. But by God, don't use this as the end all be all test. We're here to show you the system System, let you know what's coming and know that there are some things that are being worked out still yeah. and and that these are going to be available around NAB but don't think right now oh my god no that it doesn't work because you might have heard like one little distortion because we're not objectively hearing it properly like right now I'm hearing that we're phasing because we're so close to each other that's why I was you know even if I bring you down now you're hearing my voice just by itself and it sounds a little bit cleaner than it did because we're phasing we're in a very boxy room right now we're in a very boxy room yeah. So, um, but the actual the actual audio in this headphones that I'm wearing aren't aren't bad. No. Uh, there's also no. It's very very clean in here for uh, sure. Yeah, it's very clean in here. The issue also could be the fact that Wirecast that is doing our transmission uh, could be adding some gain and 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 playing around with the levels. Whenever you go into live, uh, you gotta also check your monitor. We don't have anyone downstream of our audio signal. 
doing mm -hmm. any kind of checks. Uh, we try to get this up for talking. For sure. And, and that's the best we can hope for sometimes. Yeah. And you know what, Bill? I'm sorry. I, somebody's asking me to do a walk test. I literally can't physically do it in this room right now. I can't even get to the other side until we hit cut. I promise you we're going to be doing some more stuff with these. I'm going to turn down the phasing of, of Andrew for a second. But we're going to be doing tons of tests with these in, as they continue to go. So we're going to bring them in. We're going to do some real lavalier tests and real microphone tests, real wireless tests so you guys can see the range uh, comparisons of this mic. I don't like to do a lot of comparisons on these Vault Talks. It's more about this product and what is special about this. And then from there, in new videos for Vault Talks that we're going to be doing throughout the month and before NAB, we'll be talking more about particulars where you can really hear an objective test. Yeah. Because on those, I'm not streaming. Even somebody said, I guarantee this is a stream conversion. Bingo, you got it. We're streaming to Facebook using a ton of stuff going on. And it's, it's going to different CDNs around the world before it gets to your house. So guaranteed, there might even be a little bit of a delay that you're seeing right now. I'm going to sync this up better and post later and archive it on our website at videomantis.com. And we're going to keep making these videos uh, that will not be Facebook Live. I'll have time to objectively record everything perfectly and then put it up so you guys have more examples. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll switch it back over to headsets, I guess. Yeah, let's go uh, ahead and switch back to headsets. There's yours. There's, there's mine. There That's funny. We went so hard into and by the way if everybody goes wow why does that sound so different well we have an analog microphone that's one inch from our yeah, mouths one inch. of Look course that, that's, that's going to sound that great NPR sound yep exactly mm. and <laughs> there you go so yeah system looks really solid what's the price point again any projected release date why don't we leave it there uh so the price point we're looking at between 650 and 800 okay and as for release we're looking for a pre-nab release very good so people will be able to get these before nab before NAB. Very cool. Very good. Well, guys, that's that's about it. This is the Vault Talk for the DD Connect Wireless. If you guys have any more questions, please let us know. Obviously, either me or Andrew will be able to answer them for you. Thank you for joining us. Thank this you has guys. been one of the most successful Vault Talks we've done. So thank you guys for hanging around, and we'll see you on the next one. We've got a couple new ones coming up. We've got some Vault Talks with K-Tech that are coming up. They've got some new products, which are going to be really Ooh, can cool. Can I come for that? Of course you can. There Absolutely. You know? I'll come hang out. And other than that, next week I'm going to be in Las Vegas for Manny Pacquiao versus Adrian Broner. It's one of the biggest boxing events of the year. It's still early, but it will be one of the biggest of the year. <laughs> yeah, you well. You guys got to check it out. And I'm going to bring my setup with me, so hopefully, if I have time, I'm going to try to do something from my room. And you guys are more than welcome to join us. Thank you so much for joining us on this Video Mantis Vault Talk. I'm Thomas. This is Andrew Jones from Deity. Thank you Thank for having you me. Thank you for showing this off. This has been the world premiere of the Deity Connect system. Thank you so much, and thank you to KTech, our sponsors. We'll see you on the next one.